Hey there, it's Chuck with RoadDeckBuilder.com. Uh, we are starting a new series here on NTG The Journey, and uh, we are going to do a series with lore. Uh, I don't know how often I'm going to do these, as it does take up quite a bit of time to put this stuff together. Uh, maybe once every couple weeks or so we can look forward to a new uh, lore uh, theme. Uh, but I want to I want to focus on some characters uh, and and do some backstory on some characters and and uh, try to figure out where they came from and where they're going and what their goals are things of that nature and uh, the first one I wanted to start with was Elspeth is because she is kind of the core of our current set and uh, she has kind of a rocky past so we're gonna start with Elspeth and uh, and move forward. From there, uh, I would like some uh, some other input from people that you would also like to see. Maybe you want to see some backstory on uh, one of the other Planeswalker, like Dak Faden, or maybe Nickel Bullis, or uh, uh, as we're going to go through this, we'll talk about uh, other Planeswalkers, like Venser and Karn and uh, Koth, and uh, how they fit into Elspeth's story as well. So maybe some backstory on them, or maybe you want some backstory on a specific plane or a block. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear some more feedback on what people want to see. Uh, but first, I want to focus on some characters. So I want to hear from you guys on uh, on what characters that you might want to uh, to see done. So without further ado, here let's go ahead and tear into this. So the lore of Elspeth starts, uh, uh, we'll just start with the fact that she, her name is actually Elspeth Thoreau. Uh, she was born on an unknown world inhabited by Phyrexians and was a prisoner. And Phyrexians look like this. These are Phyrexians. They are monsters that are changed by a phoresis process, which is a magic process that transforms other beings into these things. Um, they are pretty nasty, and they were holding her prisoner. And they, uh, she planeswalked for the first time at the age of 13, and she she planeswalked for a few times seeking a safe place, and that is where she came across Bant. Now, Bant is a shard of Alara. It is a white aligned with blue and green as secondary colors. It is inhabited by humans, Avon, Roxas, and semi-intelligent Loto mounts and angels that watch over the Bant plane. On Bant, she found uh, she found peace, and at 17, she began her training as a squire. She was knighted uh, three years later, and that's where we see the first uh, card for her, the Elspeth Knight Errant card. And uh, she was knighted three years later and kept her planeswalking abilities a secret. Uh, two years after she had last planeswalked, she met a Johnny Goldmane. Uh, he actually showed up and uh, was injured, and she nursed him back to health. Uh, and she thought she had found a, uh, a kind of a kindred spirit in a Johnny. Thought they had very similar viewpoints or whatever. And uh, he kind of just left her and... Uh, and, and left her with a warning that the the planes that they were in were closer than she knew, uh, so that was kind of uh, kind of an interesting setup there. Uh, after she met a Johnny or whatever, she uh, searched with her uh, squire, a guy named Aaron. I uh, don't have a picture of him; couldn't find anything. And uh, they were they were searching around her her knighthood, if you will and found a Grixis incursion zone at a rocks monastery. Uh, she quickly rushed back to the castle she served, but it fell to uh, to the Phyrexians, and her squire Aaron was killed. She used her uh, full powers and defeated uh, her all her enemies, and somehow she brought Aaron back to life. And eventually, after a whole bunch of strife and war, she planes walked away from Bant for good as far as uh, I can tell from the story and she planes walked to a place called Urborg and this is the only thing I could find as far as art for Urborg um, I don't know if this is the correct Urborg or not but this is what uh, the only thing I could find 
And uh, she had been here in her youth, I guess, and she earned a living in gladiatorial games where she used her knight training to her advantage. Uh, again, a Johnny caught back up with her there, and uh, this time he tried to discourage her from taking part in uh, in the gladiatorial games, thinking that it was benign. He hoped to encourage her to return to Bant, and she wanted really nothing to do with it, telling him that uh, it was a hopeless cause and she didn't she didn't want to return there. So he left her armor and uh, and then took off. At this point in her story, she meets Koth. Uh, he was apparently somebody she had wounded in the gladiatorial games, and he had a mark that Elspeth had recognized. Uh, he took her to a ruined structure called the Tomb of the Flesh, and Koth showed her an image from her past using geomancy. And uh, he's a geomancer, which means he has an ability to manipulate the earth. And uh, she got upset and took off again. Well, Koth tracked her down and found her, and he presented her with gems and told her to her, to bottle her fear into them, and she refused and said that her past would not be so easily forgotten. Uh, Koth used his geomancy and found out they needed to find an artificer named Venser. Uh, so him and Elspeth here, together, went on a quest looking for Venser. And here is Venser. Venser uh, was born and lived on Uruborg, uh, so they went to find him, and when they found him, he was fixing a Phyrexian vessel to use as a plane shifting ship, and Koth flew into a rage and encased Venser's head in a stone mask and forced him to walk to Mirrodin. Uh, Elspeth was pretty, uh, pretty appalled at his violence, but it didn't really affect Koth at all. He pleaded with her to come with him, but he uh, he just left and uh, left her to make up the choice on his own. So Elspeth did join up with Koth and Venser and uh, grew tired of their constant arguing. So they were ambushed by some Nim while looking for a friend of Koth, and uh, she said that she basically couldn't go any farther with them. And since she uh, wandered for a while. A uh, Volshock shaman took her in, healed her wounds, and accused her of cowardice after she again got lost in her memories, and he told her that if her word was worth anything, she should be fighting instead of talking. So, what that, uh, what that Volshock shaman told her apparently changed her entire viewpoint on her life, and so she tracked down Koth and Venser again, and they headed to the Vault of Whisperers. They found a Phyrexian invasion party there, and... Uh, Elspeth kind of froze uh, from her past and was almost captured, but the army uh, finally left, and they entered a vault with some secret help from Tezzeret. Now, Tezzeret is a human planeswalker from Esper, which is another one of these shards, I believe. Uh, they were led to uh, this guy named Geth, and there is Geth for you. He was a lich who was or, or a lick who was born on Mirrodin, and in secret they followed him into the interior of the world. They came upon a butchering room, and Elspeth slew a bunch of Phyrexian butchers, but they were outnumbered and had to escape further into the underground. Uh, when they were escaping through a meat shaft, they encountered Azuri, and he was an elven Mirren rebel leader. And he tried to stop them from going any further, but Elspeth threatened him, and Venser used some cheap magic, and they left them alone. And they continued farther and reunited with Tezzeret. And... So, Tezzeret led the companions to a room where the Phyrexians were experimenting on creatures, and Elspeth flew into a rage that killed all the Phyrexians in a matter of moments, uh, and they freed Malira. Uh, a human prisoner from a cage, and Tezzeret told him that she was a gift and completely immune to the Phoresis. They returned to the surface and were attacked by a large swarm of Phyrexians, who were mostly focused on Elphus, and she slew so many of them that the bodies stacked up around her until the companions lost sight of her. They eventually found the uh, furnace layer, uh, where the Phyrexians were not at, and located Ezerai's rebel camp. There they discovered that uh, Malira's ability uh, to be immune to the phoresis was also uh, included that she could heal the phoresis, 
and the companions left again to go to the for the core to find Karn. And they were attacked while they were leaving the camp. They escaped and followed a guide that only Elspeth trusted, and after some time, Koth took Malira and left angrily, because uh, he wasn't pleased with how the surface war was going, and left Venser and Elspeth to go ahead alone. The companions tried to catch up with Koth and Mal uh, Malira, but were ambushed by Tezzeret's Phyrexians. Elspeth flew into a rage and slew all of them, but as just as she killed the last of them, an even larger force appeared. Uh, they were captured and then rescued by Koth and Molina, and they began to escape, but Venter's strength was failing, and they had to stop. Uh, at that point, they were fought over by uh, a wizardess named Glissa and Tezzeret, and then uh, they escaped in the process, where they found Karn's throne room. Karn himself was dying, and Venter gave his life and spark to heal the golem. He asked Elspeth to take Malira, Karn asked them to, and heal the world no matter how long it took. So they headed back to the surface to begin uh, the war there. So the war on New Phyrexia that they waged failed miserably. At one point, Elspeth and Koth wondered if they were the last natural beings on the entire plane, and Koth told her to leave and used his uh, geomancy to sink her into the ground so she would have only one choice. He built a shield to protect her from the blast, but a Phyrexian obliterator grievously injured the knight before she could leave, uh, and in a half-lucid state, she planeswalked away. Which brings us to the today's uh, set of magic. And uh, when she awakes from Mirrodin, she is actually on Theros. And uh, it turns out she was actually on Theros before. Uh, she... She was drawn to the, to the Theros plane by the nature of the gods. Uh, she thought that there would be a balance that was better there, and that's why she was drawn to the plane. Uh, she witnessed a battle between Heliod and Perforos, and, uh, at which time she received her sword. Uh, when it was knocked out of uh, Heliod's hand by Perforos, and uh, during this brief period that she was on Theros, she also met Daxos, and uh, she was uh, she was she earned Heliod's attention during that point uh, as she had his sword, and uh, she was overwhelmed by the god's presence and fled at that point from the plane of Theros. So after Mirrodin, she arrived at uh, Temple of Farika on Theros. And from there, she sent a letter to a Johnny in a bottle. Uh, she let it go into the marsh, as was the custom of the acolytes at the temple. Uh, once her strength was regained, she headed out onto Theros, and she headed to Akros, uh, where she joined a mercenary band. She uh, did not go unnoticed, as the sword which she had bore, which had been missing for years, uh, she found Heliod in his temple, and... He tried to kill her, but uh, she, he was rebuffed by her magic, which baffled him. Uh, it, stu it startled him and stunned him, and he was threatened by her power and her sword, and so he transformed her sword into a spear he called Godsend, and commanded her to his temple in Miletus. Uh, on her journey to Miletus, uh, all was not peaceful. Uh, the gods all wanted her weapon, and Xenagos stirred up trouble between all of them, and uh, basically uh, fed lies back and forth to them, and tried to convince them of the ills if any of the rest of them got a hold of the weapon. Uh, the gods attacked her again and again, and nearly destroyed much of Theros in the, prophet, in the process. Krufix uh, actually commanded all of them back to Nyx, where they couldn't harm the mortal world anymore. Uh, and at this time, uh, as she was coming to, uh, coming to Miletus, uh, she met up with Polucranos and slew Polucranos, which earned her fame, and, uh, they basically threw a giant party for her, and she became the sun god's champion in Miletus. And... 
the party that they threw from her, uh, the celebration which w was held to honor her uh, victory, allowed Xenagos to ascend into godhood and join the pantheon. As a result of this, she was met with scorn by the citizens of uh, Miletus and was cast out into the wilderness as punishment. Uh, so her world was thrown into even more chaos as the god that she had sought to understand turned against her. Heliod was PO'd and uh, basically believed she was implicit in Xenagos' plan and he sought to destroy her. At which point, she went to the Leonins and met Ramaz, who reunited her with Ajani. Uh, so, she had an ally with the Leonin and Ramaz, and they uh, they were seeking to journey into Nyx through Krufisk's temple, and uh, to see if, uh, I guess, Krufisk is actually the oldest god on Theros, and uh, the oldest god on the Pantheon, and to see if he could grant them access into Nyx. So that is where our story with Elspeth is at a halt. Because we don't know, as of right now, what happens. We do not have Theros Part 2, the book yet. So I can't tell you where it goes from here, as this is where the story ends. But that's what we have on Elspeth up to date. So I learned a few things about Elspeth in the process, and I hope you did too. And uh, would like to hear some information from you guys if you have more gaps to fill in the story or maybe I got something wrong that needs to be corrected so we can get this uh, story correct here. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear some thoughts here and uh, what you think of this lore video and uh, what some tips may be to improve in the future. So yeah, it's been Chuck with RoadFBuilder.com and MTG The Journey and hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you next time.